freezing process. We need to remove heat if we want to freeze water to ice. In this video, I am going to explain the freezing process and freezing point of water using a cooling curve. Cooling curve produces a time temperature relationship during the cooling process of water. First, what is freezing? It is a phase change process. A material can transform into three phases, liquid, solid and gas. These phases could be reversible when heat is applied or heat is removed. This could be reversible processes as shown, that is phase reverses when applied energy is added or removed. Consider water, solid water that is ice could transform to liquid water and liquid water to water vapor and water vapor could also be transformed into ice. These transformation processes are freezing and melting, boiling and condensation, sublimation and depositions. In this video, we are going to understand the freezing process. What is a cooling curve? It indicates change of temperature as a function of time when a sample is placed into a cool or low temperature environment. Consider cooling of water at minus 50 degrees C from room temperature at 25 degrees C. First water is cooled and then it can be reached to its ice nucleation. After ice nucleation, there will be a sudden jump in the temperature, then water is reached at its freezing point and ice formation is continued and temperature remains constant. When all water is transformed into ice, then water temperature is decreased again and reaches equilibrium to the cooling temperature. I am going through the terminologies used in the cooling process. First part of the cooling curve is the pre-freezing when sensible heat is removed to reduce the temperature. Second is the ice nucleation. In this stage, ice formation is not at equilibrium stage, that is ice formation and melting could be observed and critical mass of ice is not formed. Third, the temperature reached to its highest point as freezing point. The process of lowering temperature below freezing point is called supercooling. Then water is reached to its freezing plateau. When latent heat is removed, and temperature remains at constant until all water is transformed into ice. Finally, all water is formed into ice and then temperature decreases again and this part is called post-freezing or tempering and sensible heat of ice is removed. At the end, the ice reached at equilibrium temperature with the environment. Freezing plateau is the ice growing phase. The rate of ice growth is dependent on the three factors. The diffusion of water molecules to the inter interface, the ability of water molecules to cross the interface and the diffusion of heat from the interface. What is freezing point? Freezing point is the temperature at which the ice crystals appear at a critical mass where both liquid water and solid ice form a critical mass and both phases that is liquid water and solid ice crystals coexist in equilibrium. We could observe unstable ice formation during supercooling before an equilibrium stays at the freezing point. Why a sudden jump at the ice nucleation? We could explain why there is a jump. When ice is formed and then liquid water releases latent heat of fusion Q to the sample surrounding the ice. If we measure the temperature surrounding the ice, then we could observe a rise in temperature. 
this is the cause of temperature rise at the supercooling. There are many factors which could affect the supercooling. We also removing heat Q from the sample by cooling. This cooling rate is dependent on the system we are using that is part of the refrigeration system. After supercooling, sample temperature is to a maximum temperature which is the freezing point. As we mentioned earlier, at this point liquid water and solid ice coexist and critical mass of ice is formed. The temperature remains constant until all water is formed ice and temperature reaches at the freezing plateau. At this point, temperature of the frozen ice decreases again to equilibrium to the cooling system. The measurement of the freezing point depends on the cooling rate. The cooling rate can be calculated from the slope of the initial temperature versus time that is degree C per minute. Faster cooling rate could decrease the supercooling temperature thus it could decrease the measured freezing point. Therefore cooling rate should be optimized. Optimized one is the cooling rate below there is no significant change of freezing point. However, a very slow cooling rate could be less sensitive to determining the freezing point. We could understand from the following examples. For example, this is slow cooling rate and we could observe the freezing point as marked. In the case of moderate cooling rate, the freezing point is lower than the measured freezing point from slow cooling. In the case of fast cooling, the freezing point would be much lower as shown in the graph. In another video, I'll explain how to optimize the cooling rate for measuring freezing point. Why do we need to cool for freezing? We could understand it from the entropy of a system. Entropy is a measure of the disorder that is randomness of a system that is increasing entropy increases disorder. Lowering the temperature lower the entropy. We need to remove energy if we want to reduce entropy by freezing or by lowering the temperature. Therefore, we need to cool water that is removing energy for freezing since the entropy of ice is lower than liquid water. I am going to explain it in the next slide. First consider vapor which has high entropy. If we want to condense water vapor to liquid then we need to remove energy since liquid water contains low entropy. Again if we want to freeze liquid water then we need to remove energy further since it contains a low entropy state. We could observe that lower the entropy higher the order of molecules. I would like to thank you for watching this video until the end and supporting my channel.